Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I am so happy to be with you tonight and happy to be coming to you on another Wednesday night for Bible class. Um, I, I, I have had an enjoyable uh, last couple of days, um, but I'm glad to just to be back uh, home and be back uh, with you online, going back into the word of the Lord, just seeking him for an answer and seeking his, and just want to know his will and what his work, what does he have to say to us today? And, you know, just, just being a part of that. So I'm so happy that you are joining us. We hope that you will, um, uh, you know, post or reshare our our posts online. We hope that if you go to YouTube, you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel and and and, and wherever you want to get your media. At. We we just appreciate you being a part of this ministry. Uh, listen, we uh, we're, we're gonna move on into our Bible class, but I want to sing a song. I'm, I, I guess my maybe my theme song and my favorite song, and then we'll have prayer. And, 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 and we'll, we'll move forward. But the song says this. It says, Oh, magnify the Lord, the Lord, for He, He's worthy to be praised. Say, Oh, magnify the Lord, the Lord, for He, He's worthy to be praised. Hosanna, yes, blessed be the rock, Oh, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Say, Hosanna. Oh, blessed be the rock. Oh, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Sing again, oh, magnify the Lord, the Lord. For he, he's worthy to be praised. Yes, oh, magnify the Lord, the Lord, for he, he's worthy to be praised. Hosanna, yes, blessed be the rock, oh, blessed be the rock, my salvation. Sing Hosanna, oh, blessed be the rock, oh, blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for it. Uh, pray with us right now. Oh, our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Lord, thy kingdom come. Lord, it is tonight that we come before you and we say thank you. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor. We just appreciate you. Thank you for giving us this day. Thank you for giving us our daily bread. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us and thank you for your mercy. Lord, unto us, we thank you, oh God, that you have given us grace and we found grace in your eyes, even tonight, Lord. Lord, we need you every day and every hour we need you. As the deer, Lord, that panted after, Lord, the water, so do it our soul. Even tonight, Lord, we, we're desiring you, Lord. We're desiring to know you. So thank you, Lord. Thank you for your loving kindness and thank you for the hope again, Lord, that you've given us even this night. And we just bless you now, Lord, we pray that as we go into this lesson, Lord, that you would bless every listener, every viewer, every participant, every supporter of this ministry, Lord, that, that we will hear from you. We want to hear your words, Lord. We want you to speak to us. Speak to us, we pray, Lord. We thank you for being good. We thank you for being our God. And we honor you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. We're going, we're going to Romans chapter number 7 tonight. Romans chapter number 7 is where we are going tonight. I came to you on Sunday from a, a beach location, and, 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 and I'm not on the beach tonight, uh, but, um, but we were talking about something um, uh, on last Sunday. Um, I spoke to you really briefly. It was a brief message, really and truly. But it was about a major subject, and that subject was the subject of marriage. We were talking about marriage on last Sunday, and I mentioned to you about how that our Lord and our Savior, when he was here, he had equated marriage. He had likened marriage, according to the scripture, to uh, the kingdom of heaven. So God is honoring that particular process 
And, 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 and whenever we bring up that subject of marriage, everybody has their opinion regarding marriage. Everybody got their ideas regarding marriage. In fact, I think there are probably at least three groups out there whenever you're talking about marriage. I guess you've kind of gotten the idea. We're going to be talking about marriage again tonight. There's at least three groups that have opinions about marriage. The first group is those that have never been married. They have an opinion about marriage. Then you got those, that group that, had, that is currently married. They have their opinion and their ideas around marriage. Then you got a group that used to be married. Uh, they have their ideas and their opinion regarding marriage. Tonight, we know also that God has already judged and prejudged marriage, and he has decided that marriage is honorable. And listen, anytime God is for something, then you can be assured that the enemy, our enemy, the devil, is going to be against it and is going to come against that particular thing in an effort to uh, uh, destroy it, in, in an effort to create so much havoc and chaos around it that, that people will walk away and not call it what God has called it. But I'm telling you, whatever God has decided regarding the matter is how it's going to be and what it's going to be. Of course, we were in the book, I think, in the book of Luke on Sunday when we were talking about marriage, and, and, and the way we approached it, the uh, subject really and truly was how Luke approached it, was it was about a wedding invitation. We, was, we approached it from the invite, the premarital stage where people were being invited, guests were being assembled, all things were being prepared for the wedding. But, but tonight, and we, we're going to talk marriage in a different vein, um, coming from Romans chapter number 7, beginning at verse number 1. We're going to begin again, Romans chapter number seven, uh, beginning at verse number one. Is we're going to we're going to kind of talk uh, from the standpoint that Paul's talked from from uh, when he was speaking with regards to marriage, really and truly. Uh, Paul, being just like the Lord, our Lord and Savior, he really used that platform of marriage to really, he, he was really talking about something much bigger than, uh, for example, the Lord talked about a certain king and who had a son. Uh, well, the Lord was really talking about something much bigger than a certain, than an anonymous king and a no-name son. He, he really was talking about something much bigger than that. But he was using that analogy in order to be able to uh, use that platform to be able to, to speak to a, a, an even larger subject. So uh, he that hath an ear, uh, that's what the Bible says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Because God is saying something more than just simply what the words are written uh, are, are being said. Same thing here tonight in our lesson when we are going to be speaking from the book of Romans chapter number 7. Uh, beginning at verse number one, we're going to read in just a moment, but Paul, again, he's using the platform of marriage. He's talking about husband. He's talking about wife. He's talking about that, that marital union. And, and, but, but the truth about it, Paul is using that simply as a platform to talk about a much larger subject. And actually, he actually, as we read further and continue to read in this chapter, we get to that much larger subject that he's, he's referring to. Hopefully, we'll get down that far tonight and, um, and, and, and be able to, to, so we can get a very good understanding. But we're talking tonight about the subject of marriage, the importance of this particular union, marriage, and how uh, listen, things, uh, the, the enemy has come against it and, and continues to come against it and fight against it. And because it's so emotionally charged that people that, that, that usually this, this situation really, it, 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 if, if it goes really bad, it, it kind of destroys people's confidence. Just what the devil wants uh, the confidence that they may have had in God and, and being able to work things out. But but I'm telling you, if God has called it honorable, whenever you talk about it, if anybody asks you about how is it, tell them. It's, if the only thing you can tell them is a few words, just make sure you tell them marriage 
is honorable. Chapter 7, Romans chapter number 7, verse number 1. We read it and, and listen what it says. It says, Know ye not, brethren. And then he says this, For I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man, over humanity, over a woman, as long as he or she liveth. That's what he's saying. He said, and, 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 and we would have said it like this. Uh, did you know, Paul writing here, in, in fact, instead of saying no, you're not, he says, did you know, we would have said, did you know that the law has dominion over man as long as he liveth? And that's, that, that's, a, that's a lot of information right there. Again, we're talking about marriage, but, but, but again, he's talking about a much broader situation. He's talking not from the standpoint of invitation to a marriage, but actually being in a marital relationship. Marriage, the, the law, it says the law has dominion over a man as long as he liveth. The law is not written for dead folks. It, the, the law might be written about dead folk, but 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 it's not written to dead folk. You don't have to write a law to dead people and tell them thou shalt not do this or thou shalt not do this. The law only continues to have effect over man as long as he liveth. Whenever that situation, either the law dies or the man dies. Then, then, no, then there is no, then, then everything ceases at that particular point. But listen to this. I want us to understand something. Paul is writing to the church at Rome, but, and he's having to have this conversation around the law because what has happened, do anybody know what has happened since Jesus has come? There is a new dispensation. What's the name of this dispensation that Jesus has ushered in? What is the name of that dispensation that Jesus has ushered in? You're right if you say grace. Jesus has ushered in because of his coming, doing what he did on the cross and dying for us. He's ushered in a new dispensation, a new age. Uh, and, and dispensation, just, an, just another term that suggests this is another way God is about to deal with humanity. That God is about to deal with you. He was dealing with him with the law and saying, thou shalt not. But now he has gone through, uh, because of what he has done on the cross, he's moved to grace. And he's dealing with humanity in another way, in another manner. So, so, that, that's, so that's the, Paul is having to have this conversation with the church at Rome is because it hasn't been so many days. It hasn't been so long that this has happened. They had been living, most of them grew up under the law. They, they, the only thing they knew was the law. And so they are, are pursuing God on the basis of trying to find God, pursue God on the basis of the law. So Paul has this question. He, 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 he begins to have a conversation with them. Romans chapter 7, verse 1, he begins to have a conversation with them. And, and he says, did you not know? that the law has dominion over man as long as he liveth. As long as he is living, then that law is in place. What the law of sin, the law of death, that law continues in place. Lord have mercy. Uh, and then he, he says something here. He says something here in verse 2. He says, for the woman, again, we're talking about marriage here tonight. So, so Paul, again, he's talking about a much broader subject, a much larger subject, but he's still dealing with the, the, the subject of marriage. He says something here. He says, for the woman which hath an husband. We're talking about the woman that hath an husband, not the one that had never had one or used to have one, but the one that hath an husband now. The Bible says, is bound by the law. In other words, uh, understand what he's saying. He's, he's really uh, equating, he's, re, he's equ re, equating the woman being the church or God's people and the husband being God, the law. He, he's, re, he's, he's really equating those two. But he says the woman, 
which has an husband is bound by the law. That is, she cannot escape, cannot get away from the law uh, to her husband as long as he liveth. Ah, oh, Lord, have mercy. Listen to this. He said, for the woman which hath an husband. I want us to understand what Paul is going at. He's, he's, going, he's trying to help us to understand something. God wanted to marry us. God wanted us in a relationship with him. Uh, Lord have mercy. He told, he told Hosea, he told him, go and get out everything you got and go and, 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 and I want you to go and marry a woman. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, she ain't, she ain't, don't look like you used to be, but I want you to go and marry. God wanted to marry. He wanted to be in relationship with us. Romans 7 and 2 says, for the woman which hath an husband. But the problem was we already had a husband or we already had, we were already in a relationship. What relationship were we in, Brother Stennis? Well, David wrote it like this in Psalms chapter 51 and verse 5. He said that, that behold, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. I was already married to sin. I was married to the law because where there is no law, there is no sin. And what, what does the Bible say? He says, let me, let me find that scripture. There's a scripture. That, that, he, says, he said in Romans chapter 4, verse 15, he says, because the law hath wrath, where no law is, there is no transgression. But David said, I was born in sin. I was born in sin. I was, all, I was born under the law. I was already married to the law when I was born. The law of sin, the law of death. I was already there when I was born. It wasn't something that I necessarily chose. It was the way I was born in that particular predicament. So, so the Bible, so Paul writing to the to the Romans in verse 7, chapter 7, verse 2, he says, For the woman which hath an husband. I want you to understand, he's talking about something much bigger than just husband and wife right here. He said, he said, God wanted to marry us. But we already had, we were already in a relationship. Ah, Lord have mercy. And guess what else? We were bound by the law. They said, what did the law say? The law says that, there, that when you're married, you can't be married to someone else. You cannot be married to another one at that particular point. That's what the law says. She is bound by the law to her husband, whoever she's married to. We were married to sin and to death. That's what we were. We were married to that situation. That's, that's the, it, we, we, we didn't necessarily choose it, but that's the way things were when we got here. And so what happens? We are, we are the, the, un, unless something changed, we were bound by the law. As long as our husband liveth. Oh Lord, as long as the lawgiver lived. As long as sin lived. As long as death lived. As long as those things, the penalties that was associated with those things were in place. The consequences that was there. We were bound by those things. We could not escape those things. But listen to what Paul says. He read on. He says this. He said, but if the husband be dead. <laughs> Woo. He said, but if the husband be dead. If some kind of way we can, we can meet the requirements of what the penalty of sin. If we can some kind of way find a way to, 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 to answer uh, whenever, whenever, whenever you, whenever you, the, the law sends for you, whenever the law sends for you, they send a summon after you. They, they also tell you how you have to answer the law. 
Uh, they summon you. They, the court send a summon. They summon you to something. And then they also tell you, here's what the answer is. This is how you got to answer the law. Well, the, 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 the sin was in place and we had to answer. Sin had to be answered. And the only way sin could be answered, the only answer that was acceptable for sin, was death. So Paul writes here, he says, for the woman which hath in husband, she's already in, 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 a, in a relationship. And because she's in a relationship, she is bound by the law that says that she can't get into another relationship while she is with her husband that's still living. And so long it as he lives, Listen, the only way this situation, the only way this marriage, the first marriage that you and I were in, the, our first marriage we were in, every one of us, we've been married one time at least. All of us, every one of us, I don't care who you are. Uh, we've been married at least, we got, we, we, we're at least in one marriage. The only way for that marriage to be discharged the only way you get a DD-214 for y'all military folk and that, that says that you have an honorable discharge, the only way to get to that space, the only thing acceptable is there has to be death. So Paul writes that the woman which hath a husband, she's already in a relationship. She's already in a relationship. The law says that she can't as long as her husband lives, she cannot be in another relationship. And there's no way to escape the relationship she's in. She has to stay there. But then he says this, but if the husband be dead. Ah, oh, Lord have mercy. She is loose from the law of her husband. And in, 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 now, when we think about this, I want, I want to, uh, because we're really talking, we are talking about marriage tonight. When women, young women, when, whenever we, you get married, men, whenever, whenever we get into a marital relationship, then it is true that, 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 that the woman, uh, according to scripture, she has to submit her will. She submits her will to her husband. He gets to make final decisions, really and truly. It doesn't mean that they don't come together and have an understanding and, and, and there are needs to in there and there's nothing wrong with that because the woman she's a has her own mind. She can make her own decision and she should. She 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 ought to make decisions about certain things. In fact, there are certain things that she has to make decisions about. One thing that she has to make a decision about for herself that no one can make that decision for her, and no one can rule over her regarding it, is her salvation. She has to make that decision regarding her salvation. God made that an individual sport. Uh, it's not a team sport, not, 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 not your salvation. It becomes a team. The team has to work together to help you to get there, but it's an individual sport. You got to want it for yourself. Regardless of what your husband says under the, ah, Lord have mercy. You still, got, you got to have, that is your decision alone to make. God left that for you to make. But in a relationship, we got to understand, we have to understand because, because we got to understand God has likened this marriage to heaven. He's remarried. He said, this is just, just like a king having a son and he's wanting to honor his son by having a marriage. So he's inviting guests to be a part of this particular, this, this, this grand occasion, this royal meeting. God said, so in order for uh, us to, to, to be a part of it, in order for us to be a part of it, then we have to be willing to submit our will to whatever God desires for us, similar to what women has to do. Listen here, uh, watch this. God wanted to marry us. But we were already in a relationship. Some of us were married to, and we were all married to something that was no good for nothing. 
We were married to something that was unfaithful. We were married to something that was broke, something that was foolish. We were married to the equivalent of Bozo the Clown. And God wanted to be our Boaz. And I know somebody don't know what in the world he's talking about right now. Uh, you go, uh, we'll, we'll help you with that later. But God wanted to marry us, but we was already in a relationship. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh, Lord have mercy. So, so what, 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 how does this work? How does this work? So I, I said something early. I said that this, I said that, our first marriage, we were already in a marriage. When we were born, David said, I was, I was born into sin. I was already born uh, married to that process of sin. I, I, I could not escape from that situation with sin. I, I couldn't get away from it. I, I was there, stuck there to endure the consequence of whatever sin was going to ha happen in my life. Whatever sin was going to bring, that was my husband. Whatever he brought is what I was going to be, was going to be my consequence. So in order for us to get out of that first marriage, which was destined to end in death, death was, again, the only way for that marriage to be discharged. But if we wanted to have something different than that, then Christ was offering us something different. He wanted to marry us. You remember that? So for, us, for the ones of us that God has enlightened, we've come to the knowledge of truth. We've entered into another marriage with Christ. And now this marriage is destined to never end. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be just like God wanted it to be. From the beginning, ah, Lord have mercy. In, in, in the beginning, God told, he told them, said, said, they, they was quoting Noah's law because they was trying to get divorces in the, in the New Testament. God, in the Old Testament, God, God said Moses allowed it to be, but in the beginning, that wasn't the way marriage was supposed to end. Moses allowed for divorce. Yes, he did. And he told him, go ahead and give him a writ of divorcement. But that's not, he, that's not the way he initially wanted marriage to be. In fact, the truth about it, God wanted marriage to last forever. That was his original perfect will for marriage. That we live forever, that we stay together forever. In perfect harmony with each other and with God. That's the way it originally was going to be. Of course, that thing changed when sin entered in. All things change when sin entered in. Lord have mercy. And therefore, we have to deal with our first husband. Ah, Lord have mercy. We got to deal with our first marriage first. Romans chapter 7, verse 3. It's so much in this. It is so much in this. But I got, I, I got to move on just a little bit further. He says this. So then if. While her husband liveth. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. Oh, my Lord, do you see God? Listen, it, God wanted and he still wants. That help us to make make sure we understand that he still wants a legally recognized marriage. He want he want he want everything to be legal. He he wanted to follow the law to the, to the letter because he wanted everything between his church, his people, the marriage that he was going to get into. He wanted that marriage between the lamb. He wanted that that marriage to be perfect. And he didn't want anyone to be able to come and, 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 and say, uh, if, if anybody had a reason why this shouldn't happen, speak now. He, he, wanted, he wanted to close all mouth, shut all mouth regarding this situation. God wanted a legal marriage. So he says, so then if 
while her husband living, she be married to me. She is called an adulteress. But Paul goes on and said, because Paul is going somewhere with this. I'm telling you, he's going somewhere with this. He said, but if her husband be dead, I just want you to understand something. I'm, I'm, about to, I'm, I'm about to lay something on you, but I want you to understand this process. If that husband is dead, she is free from the law. So that she is not an adulterer, although she's married to another man. <laughs> oh my goodness, gracious Lord and mercy. If that husband be dead, if you have become dead to sin, Oh, Lord, if that relationship has been dissolved by death, death has to occur, you understand, in order for that relationship to be totally dissolved. It can't be dissolved any other way. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So Paul says, he says, listen to what he says in verse 4, Romans chapter 7 and verse 4. He says, wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law. And I'm going to tell you how it works. It works by the body of Christ. We got a dead body here to prove that, 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 that death has occurred. The, the, the answer to sin has been submitted. Oh, Lord, have mercy. In order to have this legal relationship between another man, the first man, Sin has been answered. Death no longer can submit that, that it has not occurred. No one has died. We got a body here. Paul says, listen here. Brethren, ye are become dead. How do we do it? Well, we are dead by the body of Christ. And that's the reason we are buried with him in baptism. The reason we have to, whenever we die, whenever we repent of our sin, we say, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm ready to change. I'm ready to quit. I'm ready to escape this damnation. I'm ready to get out of this relationship that, that's going to end in death. I know if I stay in it, Lord, I'm going to be, it, it's going to end in death. I'm ready to get out of it because you're saying you got something better for me. You're saying that you can give me life. Paul says this, he said, my brethren, I know you know the law. Ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even him. You can get married to someone else now. Why? Because we have a body. We have some, the answer to sin has been answered has been submitted, it has been submitted. We, we, there's no one that can submit and say that there's a reason why this situation shouldn't go forward. All mouths have been closed. Everything has been nailed to the cross. Oh, Lord have mercy. God said, I have the victory now. I've taken the victory. And now I'm ready to offer it to you. I want to give you the victory. This same victory that I had. I want you to have this same. I want you to be an heir to and a joint heir with me. Oh, uh, Lord, everything I got, I want you to have. Uh, life eternal, I want you to have it. It's yours. I want to marry you. I want to be in a relationship. We're talking about marriage here tonight. God said, I want to be in a relationship with you. And I'm willing to go to whatever length. I've, I've, I've done everything that was necessary in order for us to be in this relationship. Death, sin required that your first husband, your first husband who you were married to is now dead. That situation is dead. I've answered that situation. Death has been submitted. Oh. So now we can move forward with the relationship. Christ, you can be married to another. And no one can say you, you got another husband over there still living. Because that husband is dead. 
Uh, that situation is dead, my brothers and sisters. It is dead. God has done what was necessary in order to bring death to that situation so that we can live. We're talking about marriage here. We're talking about marriage. We're talking about the, the, the responsibility that we have in marriage. The husband has a responsibility in marriage. The husband has a responsibility in marriage. And it's a huge responsibility. It is a huge responsibility. I'm talking about your natural marriage now, if you're married. The husband has a responsibility, a huge responsibility for his bride, for the one that he has married. He has a responsibility to that, that woman that he has married. And brothers, let's do what God said marriage is. Let's honor it. God said marriage is honorable and the bed is not defined. So brothers, let's honor our responsibility that we have. Yes, the wife, she's not left out of the situation. She has a responsibility. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Whenever we get in our place, oh, my goodness, look, look, look at my, it makes the relationship work so much easier when we get in our place and do those things that we know we have to do. Let's honor what we've done, what we said we were going to do. You got up there, didn't nobody force you to get up there and say you were going to be with that woman for until death do your part. Woman, you said the same thing about that man. Let's honor that thing. Let's honor it. We got to honor God. We have to honor God, my brothers and sisters. We have to honor God. And God is expecting us. He's, he's expecting us to honor those things that we've said, our vows that we've made. Somebody said, I made a vow to the Lord. I said, I was going to be with him. I wasn't going to, and I, I wasn't going to never go back. Well, you've made that vow to God. I'm telling you right now, he's watching you. He wants to see that you're going to keep that vow and that you're going to, you're going to honor that vow that you made. It was important when you, wrote, when, you, when you said it. It should have been important. You should have known what you were getting into because it was an important matter. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So if your first marriage, since your first marriage is no good, that marriage that you got in, with your first husband, which was sin, I'm telling you, you need to get out of that marriage. There is a way for you to legally get out of that marriage. Right now, you have the ability right now to get out of that marriage. And I'm telling every one of you, you still married to sin, you need to get out of that marriage. You are on, you're in a dead-end situation. It leads to nothing good. Get out of it before it's too late. Ah, uh, Lord have mercy. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have that more abundantly. I'm telling you, God wants to give you life, my brothers and sisters. He has a better way. He ushered in grace. He, he said, the law, we're going to do away with the law. I've answered the law. He's ushered in grace and he wants to give us the grace that we need in order to be able to, to be in this relationship with him. God said, he told Paul that I, I'm not going to, every situation in life that you're dealing with, I'm not going to resolve it for you, but I'm going to give you the grace to be able to get through it. So God is going to hope, let, I'm, I'm just praying that God will continue to be with you and continue to be with us as we deal with this new relationship. I hope you've joined. I hope you've decided that I want to make, I want to get into a new relationship with Christ. If you do, repentance is necessary. You got to want this thing. It's a person, it's a, it's a personal decision you got to make. It's all on you. It's not, this is not something your husband can make for you. You got to make this decision for yourself. You got to repent of your sins. You got to be baptized in Jesus' name. If somebody tell you something different, if even an angel come from, come from wherever he came from and tell you something different, don't believe him. Jesus said, don't be deceived. You need to have God's spirit working on the inside of you. That is the relationship. That gets you into the relationship that God wants to have with you. 
And that relationship, I'm telling you, is an honorable situation. God bless you tonight. I'm going to pray for you that God will be with you, continue to help you and keep you as you go through your day. Listen, we'll be back again with you on Sunday at 11.30 a.m. We will be at the church. Uh, so those that, that want to are willing and, and can, please meet us at the church. We will be at the church on Sunday, 11.30, to have a, a, a wonderful service in the Lord. And God is going to meet us there. I'm telling you, he is. Pray with me right now. Lord, we love you. Lord, we just honor your name. Thank you for your word here that you've sent, Lord, to speak to our hearts. Oh, God, we wanted to hear you. We needed to hear you. Lord, we just thank you for what you've said to us. Now we ask you to bless us as we go out and try to do everything and live up to what you've given us, what you've told us, these things that you've said to us, Lord. Help us to walk in it, Lord. Oh, Lord, now be with us. Even keep us, Lord, from all hurt, harm, and dis danger, all of this disease and viruses that are out there. Lord, be with us and keep us under your blood. We just trust that you're going to do it for us. And we honor you for all things in Jesus' name. God be with you until the next time. In Jesus' name, amen.